Stay with us here on World Insights still to come on the program. On today's edition, witness to history to mark China's reform and opening up. Chinese economist Li Daokui on the speed and breadth of reforms amid a complex global backdrop. Catch that interview right after this break. Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The program is coming to you Monday to Friday on CGTN. This week, we bring you our special series, Witness to History, featuring insiders who took part in China's reform and opening up. Today, let's meet Li Daokui, one of the best known Chinese economists in the world. A meeting of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee was held in Beijing on Thursday. Topping the agenda was work on the economy for the year 2019. Senior party officials agreed the country should pursue progress with an eye on stability and press ahead with high quality development. China's economy has maintained a stable growth this year, but challenges persist. In November alone, for example, foreign direct investment, FDI, fell by 26 percent, while China and the U.S. are trying to fix trade frictions. As Professor Li told me earlier, in the past four decades, China's reform and opening up did wonders for the country and the economy, but now it is headed for deep waters. Take a listen. There has been different views about reforms. Mm -hmm. Some say it's not necessarily in the speed to the satisfaction of most. Others say, well, there has to be a steady growth of these policies and steady implementations of these policies. What do you think, Professor? Let's compare China's reform to the construction of a building. Mm. Right? After 40 years of construction, this building is already pretty much having taken its shape. However, the internal decoration that re now requires very detailed work, painstaking details, are now the task of reforms. So therefore, the reforms today seem to be slower mm. than it was 40 years ago or 30 years ago because the nature of the progress of the construction of this house of the modern economy in China. So I wouldn't necessarily say that China is lacking commitment to reform or reform slows down. Rather, every piece of reform in mm. China today involves more thinking more debates, more deliberation, more research mm. than before. The so-called deep water. Exactly. And I call it detailed painting. Mm. What do you mean by that from an economic uh, scholar's perspective? In economic terms, I do believe that the reform in, financi in the financial sector will speed, up, will speed up. For example, the structure of financial regulation right. will be uh, consolidated. Even though I do not know the details, but I'm pretty comfortable in predicting that, that the co-regulatory -regu structure mm. will be consolidated, will be streamlined, will be strengthened. Some of the local numbers when it comes to GDP have been cooked for years, and therefore people put a question mark about China's exact growth rate. What about the picture now? Local enterprises are now given different sets of incentives. Before, they were pretty much um, simply motivated to, to have GDP, to, to have economic growth, to have faster GDP growth. Mm. Now, they are given a multi-task, multi-dimensional task. Multi task. Uh, not only economic growth, uh, but more important, the, li the increase in living standard, mm -hmm. the improvement of the environment, and uh, R&D. Uh, so on and so forth. So I do believe that the local leaders are now very different. Mm. I've been traveling around in China. I've s in recent months, mm. I've seen tremendous change, tremendous change in the mentality of local officials. Give me an example, Professor. For example, I just came from a big, big uh, city in the province of Shandong mm -hmm. with a population almost 10 million. 10 million, okay? It's not the capital of Shandong, but it's one of the largest cities in Shandong. Right. And the mayor, who invited me to go there. Mm. He uh, spends lots of energy and his uh, time to one topic, 
has been also asking me about this topic, how to change the engine mm. of economic growth from simply making investments mm. in infrastructure to... Or real estate, to, to say the least. <laughs> to sustainable investments to prop up the local R&D. Mm. And also, he says, educated population. Therefore, the industry in the city will be able to update. Mm. There has been concern whether countries, including China and others, there will be a rise of nationalism. So when you have pressure coming from outside, it's predictable nationalism would arise in the country. So how would that work eventually on the economic policies and on the way of reform? It's an interesting question, isn't it? If you look countries after countries in today's world, starting from the U.S., right, President Trump, don't you see that as nationalism? U.S. first, America first, right? As simple as that. But that has not been well received by the rest of the world, by the way, But domestically, the president elected by the U.S. population, right? But the U.S. voters is inward-looking, nationalistic. Mm. Nationalism is the trend of today's world. The Chinese government, including Chinese, you know, represented by Chinese leaders, right, are always, always trying to balance nationalism with a global commitment, mm -hmm. right? When, when President Xi Jinping says the China dream, he also says the common destiny. Mm. The community of shared future for all. Exactly. He always has double two messages. The two messages are combined. Mm -hmm. That is, how to make China great again is through China being able to make more contribution to the rest of the world, unlike the past 500 years. In the past, past 500 years, not only China slowed down as a country in making progress, but also China slowed down as a country making contribution to the rest of the world. Mm. So today's message from China, I think, is super clear. Forty years of reform and China's opening up, right? You were a Chinese student, and then you went overseas. You studied there in the United States, became a professor, worked there, comfortable life. But then you thought there's something better and bigger to be done, and you came back. You t teach at Tsinghua University. You try to establish the first ever institution on the Chinese university campus between Chinese and foreign, uh, in a way, joint efforts. So you knew how it was like to be someone coming from outside, coming back, and also to be a reformer in this process. The big takeaway from this 40-year anniversary of the reform is very, very simple. That is, continue the process and let the process not only benefit the Chinese people, but also the rest of the world. Reform is a mentality, truly. Reform is a mentality. Every day, in everything I have to implement the reform. For example, I've been teaching a course for 14 years, an undergraduate course. Every year I have to innovate. And I told students, if I don't innovate, if I don't do reform, somebody will, who is much more eloquent, much more knowledgeable, much, more, much better looking than myself, <laughs> will do I'm a not video sure whether teaching. that is the standard we're talking Will do the internet learning. No, who am I? I will, I will be replaced. So that's why in my teaching, especially in recent years, I always, always do reform. So in my current teaching, I reverse it. I let students first, first present the teaching material. Mm -hmm. I give them the PPT beforehand, and that make comments. That way, I believe I cannot be easily replaced. <laughs> so this is an example of reform. Not reform by artificial intelligence. Exactly. Reform is a mentality. I do believe that the, the reform as a mentality is deeply, deeply rooted in China. But you also know the challenge of being a reformer. Of course. Because of course. you try to set up an institute on Tsinghua University campus, and it takes years. Yeah. And of course, you always encounter with challenges that could be part of the fun, you could argue, yeah. but at the same time, it is challenging. It's challenging because, number one, you have to be patient. Number two, you really, really, really have to think from the other people's perspective. You have to make sure potential losers are properly taken care of. Right? You can imagine, you might be a loser. Of, the, of any reform process, any reform. right? 
you feel very uncomfortable. So any successful reform uh, has to, right, has to overcome the uh, obstacles from the from the potential losers. And I, my belief is not to wipe them out. But Rather, they have you have to find a way to make them comfortable. But is the baggage to too heavy? Well, reform that by definition is that we have a bigger pie. We have a bigger pie. We have a bigger right, bigger economy, more efficiency. So we we should be able to afford to compensate the potential loser. Maybe it's a better word. Potential, potential. Uh, uh, Those interests people, are being right? challenged. That's mm. right. Mm. But how patient can you be? Do well, you need to be as a reformer? In China, we have a saying that uh, 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 being slow is not a problem. The problem is to stop. Right? If you keep on moving, keep on, keep on moving, you eventually will get there. Some example in Beijing traffic. If in Beijing traffic in a crossroad, if you stop, you never go cross because it's so busy. They are, they are, they are, they are bicycles, they are uh, passengers, they are right, pedestrians, they, they are always cutting our way, right? So what you do in Beijing's crossroads, if you, you have to gradually move, 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 right? Then people would yield to you. All right. If you, you run you too fast, you, you run too fast, you have accident. If if stands still, you never come across. Well, you ride a wonderful motorcycle in Beijing, so I would <laughs> believe you. <laughs> what That's you right. have just said. Yeah. Looking ahead, it's not going to be easy to say the least, Professor. And China will be in the water that it has never been before. So. What kind of mes mindset, Professor, do you think? What is the leadership or the common folks, academics in China, from your perspective, need to have? Number one. And hold it dear. Number one, a sense of uh, urgency, a, a sense of um, um, uh, crisis, maybe too strong word, mm -hmm. a sense of needs uh, of continued reform. Mm -hmm. right? That's very, very important. Number two, be global. Always keep in mind that China is big enough, huge enough, so anything Chinese essentially is global. Mm -hmm. So we also have to take foreigners or people in the rest of the world's interest into account. Mm -hmm. We have to understand their mentality, we have to understand their interest. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, I believe that China's growth, China's continued progress will also benefit the rest of the world. Professor Lee, it's always a great pleasure having you on our program. All the best. My <laughs> honor. My pleasure. Thank you so Thank much, you. Professor. Thank you.